Hi, I'm Lauren. I hope you get encouraged by the video and I hope you get something out of it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and enjoy it. And we are doing a panel today. Junie, you want to come back? You want to come up? Okay, so Junie was all supposed to be on our panel, but what we're gonna do is, is it gonna be an open-ended question thing? So you guys can ask questions. If you don't have any questions, we'll be able, Landon, you can be up there too. Okay, um, it's gonna be an open-ended question type thing. So if you wanna ask a question, you can ask a question. Raise your hand, we'll call on you, you can answer it. If you don't have any questions, we'll pull up some questions for you to, for us to ask our panel. But ask them some hard questions because um, I want to stump them. Because I kind of threw all of them up on the spot, like yes, last night and today. So ask them hard questions. But yeah, we'll go ahead. And we'll play past the mic. Um, but does anyone have a question right now, or do we just want to go right in? Okay. Zero. Four. What was your password, Landon? Zero four. Uh, zero four seven three four zero. Seven three four zero. Okay. Cool. So here's a question, real quick. If I can find one. Okay, so how do you struggle with judge with not with judging people and not judging people? Because I know as a Christian, uh, we always see that uh, there was all these people like, You're, "This is such a judgmental religion," blah 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 blah. But in reality, it really isn't. It's just a matter of how people are dealing with it. How do you deal with judgment? How do you deal with people that are like kind of closed-minded and that don't want to listen to you? And we'll start down the line. Okay, I think that we shouldn't judge people because number one, it's not nice. And two, I feel like people can't control what they go through. So if like their house is small or whatever, it's not their fault, example. <laughs> and then um, also, I wouldn't like to be judged. And I know people are gonna end up judging me anyways, but it doesn't really affect me. And I know I wouldn't like to be judged, so I wouldn't wanna judge somebody else because I know how it feels. So yeah. It's mean. So yeah, basically what she said, it, it doesn't feel good to be judged, so don't judge. But there's also times where if someone's sinning, you do need to tell them and be loving to them and help them out in it. Because if they don't know they're sinning, they're going to keep walking that line, and you don't want to let them walk that line. Okay. Um, so a lot of things, okay, you know, um, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. So try to put yourself in other people's shoes or try to see it from their point of view, if that makes sense. Because, you know, I think one, uh, one of the recent series we just did was Hurt People Hurt People. So, you know, when people are going through things or all that stuff, we shouldn't judge them, but instead we should maybe try to think about what they might be going through that's causing that pain and be patient with them. And maybe if you can and if they're open, help them through it. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's my turn. Um, I mean, it, it's, his, his question kind of confused me, so I'm going to give, like, both examples. So, as a Christian, you should be willing to be able to, like, see past the cover. You don't want to judge by the cover. Jesus said, judge not, and ye be not judged. So, you don't want to judge them by their cover obviously you want to be able to at least let them invest and he was talking about if they won't let you do that i believe you said something around that like they won't talk to you or anything and the best thing i can say is be patient don't don't go away from them just because they don't like christianity they hate christianity don't treat them as a friend it doesn't matter if they're christian or not you should be loving to everyone you meet even if they disagree with every single thing they go with. You give them enough respect, and they will eventually respect you back. Okay, so I, I said I was going to ask you guys hard questions. Does it, uh, before we go and move on to anything else, does anyone have any questions or follow-up questions to what we just talked about? Going once, twice, three times. Okay, so um, another question is, it's really straightforward, and it should be really straightforward. Um, can, okay, so can, 
is it a requirement to speak in tongues as a Christian? Do you, do you think it is a requirement? And I know in Mr. Wilson's Bible class, we have talked about spiritual gifts. We've talked about a whole bunch of stuff. But do you think as a person, it, or just as a believer in Christ, do you think it is like you have to speak in tongues? Like, do you think it as a requirement? I'll start with you. Um, no, not a requirement because it's a spiritual gift. And not everybody has every single spiritual gift. Only some people have specific spiritual gifts. Some people have them all, but not everyone does. But I mean, I think, I think speaking in tongues is something that can happen to anyone when you let the Holy Spirit intercede, or like when you let the Holy Spirit basically speak for you. But it's not a requirement. Like just because you don't speak tongues doesn't make you any less Christian. I don't think that you should like speaking tongues doesn't. Yeah, because. Like Izzy said, it's something that everyone can do, but it's only, like, if you're really, I don't know, like, if the, like, Jesus or God is really talking to you, then it comes out. But I guess anyone can, yeah. Isabella basically said all I was going to say. Uh, everyone, everyone has their own spiritual gift, and that may not be yours, but you have something else. And you may not know what it is, but you'll find out. Uh. I have to concur with like what everyone else said. It's definitely a gift if they have it. Um, it you also have to know that God, you don't have to speak in tongues, tongues for God to hear you. As long as you've been trying to keep the sin out of your life, he will hear you. Okay, so we're going to make it a little bit easier on y'all. Um, a lot of us deal with a lot of stuff, and like Isabella was talking about, we recently came out of a series talking about hurt people and dealing with the hurt that we go through. Because if even if you don't realize it, if you don't deal with the hurt that you have now, it'll, you either continue to grow with it and you continue to carry it in your life, or you carry it and you pass it down to another generation. And so my question to y'all is, how do you handle the hurt that you were dealt with? How do you handle the cards that you were dealt with that aren't always the best, but how do you handle it? Um, I know one thing that whenever you're hurting, you feel like you want to isolate, and that's something you need the people, you need the right people around you. You need to be with people like your your close knit group, because you know there's a difference between your like close knit group and you're just your friends. You want that close knit group, those people that you trust, those people that you've built those close relationships with, that you know will encourage you during the time when you feel down. You need to surround yourself with those people. And you also need to be honest and open with those people, like with mentors and leaders at church. It's the times when you're hurting that you need to be open with them because it's not good to hold all that pain and all that hurt in. You need to let it out, whether it's telling your leader or whether it's just telling God because he's the only real healer and you need to go to the only person who can really heal you, heal your pain. Yeah. So, as well as said, <laughs> but you, you, need to, you need to have a group of friends that you know you can go to and that will have your back. But not only that, but you need to have a good spiritual like, uh, adult that you know knows what they're talking about and that you can go to. And go to God yourself. Uh, get in his word, pray, read the Bible, and... It'll work out. A lot of these answers are <laughs> really similar, but I would have to agree with them. Um, something you have to remember is to all to always have someone ready to talk to that will disagree with you and put you in your place and tell you that you are wrong, what you're doing is wrong. And that's honestly a little rare to come by, but it's what you have to do in order to make sure you're doing the right thing. And to get closer with God, you need friends like that to help you get closer to God. <laughs> okay, so I think dealing with hurt, um, if you don't have friends, like close friends or like an adult that you can't trust, you can talk to God because even if it seems like he doesn't hear you, everything's going to work out uh, with his plan. So... Like, if things are going wrong in school or someone's being mean to you or, like, you know, your mom and your dad, you know, God's going to be there for you. You can just talk to him. And if you actually, like, if you actually really want to, you'll feel his presence and you'll feel like him, like he's with you. And 
if you do need somebody to talk to, you know, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be nice to you. I don't judge people because, you know, I already said that. It's mean and it's not nice. So, yeah. But just make sure you pray and tell God your problems and he'll hear it. He'll hear you. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, taking a step on a little bit of harder side, does anyone, before I move on with one more question, does anyone have any other questions leading up to that? Okay. So, my question is maybe the last one, but I want to talk about this. Um, our generation is, like, it it's can be whack sometimes. Like, if I'm not wrong, like, I know I'm not wrong. Our generation can be whack, and it can be messed up, and it can be we can be really bad sometimes. We can also be really, really stupid sometimes too. And so my question is, how do we deal with, um, how do you deal with stupid people? <laughs> like, like as much as like, that's the, like, that's the best way I can put it is like, how do you deal with the people with so, like stupid people? Because like as Christians, like we should be slow to speak, slow to anger. How do you deal with people like that when you know you just want to just snap on them? For me personally, when it comes to stupid people or people that make me want to act out of my character, a lot of times I just have to walk away in the nicest way possible. Not just like walking away, but kind of just being like, hey, I got to step to the side a little bit. I got to step to the side for a second. Um, yeah, that's that's what you got to do sometimes. sometimes you just got to walk away and so you don't act out of your character. Okay, sometimes I can be that person, so I know like, <laughs> yeah I know like oh like how it feels to be in their shoes sometimes so I say that you just got to be patient or like while you're talking to them you can like pray in your head be like God give me the patience you know and then you know like just be nice don't be like too mean if they're stupid because they probably don't understand I know they, <laughs> they probably don't understand or like it's never happened to them before so they don't know and yeah, just try to be nicer to them or, you know, don't be too mean or yeah, walk away. So how to deal with stupid, stupid people? Basically, like Isabella said, <laughs> like Isabella said, don't be afraid to walk away, but you also need to know that sometimes the stupid people are the people that you need to get to and like, you need to be loving to them and show them what it like, the fruits of the spirit, and just be kind and loving and patient. Yeah. Okay, so um, I I kind of took this question in two ways. I know I'm talking a lot. <laughs> okay, so for their response, I totally agree with them. I don't actually struggle with this at all, to be honest. I have a lot of patience, but if I ever was to lose my patience, the best thing I could say is just put it down. Just know that they're most likely wrong. You're right. It's not that big of a deal. Just keep going at them. Don't like actively go after them, but you know, just let them know. And also, uh, if you're like in a debate with them because they're stupid, <laughs> the the advice I would give is. Um, I know it says somewhere in the Bible, but I cannot quote anywhere where it is. But basically, it says, don't argue with someone stupid because they'll drag you down to their level and beat you. <laughs> so, I, yep, I can figure out that verse later, but I can't do it on hand. Thanks, guys. Okay, so before we go, uh, let's pray, and then we'll go ahead and head out. Dear God, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for you bless us with. God, I thank you for the people that you brought here today. God, I just pray you soften someone's heart, touch them today, God. God, I just pray for the rest of the school year. God, I pray you give us um, give us wisdom on our exams. God, I pray that as we go into our summer, God. God, I just pray that you put your hands around us. God, I just thank you and praise you for all you do. In your name we pray, amen.